And I give the call to the member for Robertson. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I rise today to update the House on the vital and important work of the Robertson Tackling Drugs and Alcohol Committee. Over the past several months, the committee has met several times and discussed a number of ways to help our community tackle the challenge of illicit drugs. A number of community-led strategies have been raised by members of this committee, and today I'm pleased to advise the House that arising from these discussions, the Brisbane Water Liquor Accord has now extended its successful Bard from One, Bard from All program to now also target illicit drugs and violence around licensed premises. This means if you're barred from one venue, you are, you are barred from all in our local region. Committee member Zane Treadwell, the licensee of the Central Coast Hotel and secretary of the Brisbane Water Liquor Accord, was the key driver of our initial discussions on this issue, which aims to curb dangerous and antisocial behaviour. I'm advised that the accord has already resulted in safer venues for patrons, staff and the community alike, and so extending it to drugs and violence was voted upon and passed unanimously by members of the Liquor Accord. And may I congratulate Zane for his work and important advocacy on this issue. To ensure that the community is aware of this initiative, Madam Deputy Speaker, new artwork is actually on clear display now in pubs and clubs in my electorate just in time for summer holidays. I spoke with Zane who said that this fantastic result demonstrates the hard work and diligence displayed by those involved in the Tackling Drugs and Alcohol Committee in Robertson. May I also commend Daniel Bryan, the president of the Liquor Accord, for his work in this area. There's a genuine confidence around the committee that these steps will complement and support the united front presented by the community and police towards antisocial behaviour and illicit drug activities on the Central Coast. Committee member and Brisbane Water Local Area Command Superintendent Danny Sullivan told me he's already seeing a very positive response to these measures in our community. The new poster, for instance, has been viewed by around 3,000 people online already, and Superintendent Sullivan said it was a really clear way of helping to make venues safer by offering a real incentive to modify behaviour. Another initiative that the committee is looking at, Madam Deputy Speaker, is the Party Safe program, which we'd like to be able to support and extend in some ways. This program will target 15 to 18-year-olds and focus on alcohol, drugs and mental health, and it already does a great job in our electorate. It's called Building a Better Tomorrow, and the program involves a series of community forums which we'll be working on collaboratively together to look at rolling out next year. These forums will help reach parents and students and encourage access to support groups, hotlines, online support and drop-in centres. The committee is also keen to develop closer engagement with local schools across my electorate through specific teachers' development days with principals, deputy principals, head teachers and teachers. And I really want to thank Paul Gilmore, the president of the Brisbane Water Secondary College, for his initiative and vision to help enable this to happen. Paul told me that enabling teacher awareness on the Central Coast will help unlock greater student awareness about very important issues related to drugs and alcohol. Fiona, Morris, Fiona Morrison from the Australian Drug Foundation, who joined us at our last meeting, also underlined the urgent need for families to receive support. Fiona said this work will be vital to reduce usage and harm and that the community has an important role to play in tackling drugs and alcohol in our community. Julie Clark, the project officer of Family Drug Support and fellow committee member, said families can be a vital force for positive change in communities when they're able to cope with the realisation of their situation and then survive the journey. Madam Deputy Speaker, these initiatives have all risen as a result of a brief meeting with Edelong Diggers CEO Bill Jackson on the peninsula, who said to me one day, what can we do to help? There must be more that we can actually do to help our community in this very important matter of tackling particularly drugs and the use of drugs, and it was around ice, but of course it then extended uh, to, to other drugs as well. And as a result of this, as a result of his desire to help, we now have very strong representation from community leaders and experts all working together. So I really want to commend the committee members I've mentioned so far, and also Russell Cooper from the Gosford RSL, John Green, Director of the Australian Hotels Association, Ben Bradley from Davistown RSL Club, Tim McGavin from Etalong Bowling Club, Carly Treadway from the Party Safe Program, Andrew Tuck, CEO of, of, of Coast Community Connections, 
Uh, New South Wales Government Representative Tina Davies, the Central Coast Regional Liaison Officer from the Department of Premier and Cabinet. Steve Childs, Service Manager from Drugs and Alcohol from the Service Central Coast Local Health District and the CEO. Matt Hanrahan. Combined with the outstanding initiatives of the federal government, including the Nationalised Task Force that I understand will be unveiled shortly, this has been a tremendous community effort of which the Central Coast can be rightly proud. Thank you. Thank you. Member for